Now, in the box here, we have the Brooks Ghost 16, which will be my first Brooks Ghost that I'm testing. And now, on either side, we see the two types of everyday running shoes, the two types of daily trainers that a lot of us are going for in 2024. On this side, you got the exciting guys, right? The plated shoes like the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4. They might have a race day foam, a taller stack, bouncier shoe, nice and light and fast like the Hoka Mach 6. You got a more protective tall stack shoe with the zany design language like we see in the a6 nova blast 4 and then like the mach 6 again you got a lower stack faster fun shoe a little bit more muscular design language a little bit of a more exciting everyday running shoe and now on this side of the box we got the vanilla bean we got the tahitian vanilla and we got the french vanilla and that's where the brooks ghost comes into play this is a standard running shoe it is the default for a lot of runners out there i know some people who take their brooks ghost to 500 700 miles they buy a pair they run a few times a week and they switch them out every two to three years when the rubber finally goes. And so in this category, we see really durable shoes. We see a lot of rubber on the bottom of these guys. We see not so much of an exciting ride out of a lot of these. There's more standard training foams, but there have been some new shoes coming in like the Puma Velocity Nitro 3 that are pushing this $140 everyday running shoe category in a more exciting direction. You got the Nitro foam in here. It's a little bit faster. It's a little bit bouncier. And of course, the Pegasus is the mainstay of the collection. It's my favorite in here. It's got a nice, simple ride. So I'm excited to see where the Brooks Ghost 16 fits in. At this $140 price point, there are a lot of competitive options. Of all these exciting shoes over here, three of them, the Rebel, the Nova Blast 4, and the Mach 6, are all at that $140 mark. And these three over here are there as well. So the Brooks goes 16. So to make sense in 2024, it doesn't need to be as exciting, as bouncy, as fast as some of the shoes we see over here, but it does need to offer a simple ride in a nice versatile package like we see out of my Nike peg. So I was a little bit disappointed in the 880. I'm hoping that the Brooks Ghost can do for me what the 880 didn't. So let's pop this thing open and see what it's all about. Bang. I uh, opened in my first ever Brooks Ghost. Now I think, I don't know if you can tell based on the size of the box here, but I think there might be another shoe in here too. You can guess in the comments what the other shoe is. Censored, censored on that side, censored. All right guys, so Brooks Ghost 16. I have had two other Brooks shoes, but this is my first Ghost. Now Brooks, Let's see what it is. Boom. Okay. We can do it. This is the Denver Broncos colorway. I like it. Now, as I mentioned, the Brooks Ghost 16 is the standard running shoe. And when I say the standard, I mean, it is the one that if you don't know what running shoe to get and you walk into Run For Your Life in Charlotte, you walk into the Charlotte Running Company, you walk into a Fleet Feet there's a good chance you'll walk out with a Brooks Ghost, or if you need a little bit of support, you need a little bit more stack, you might walk out with the Glycerin GTS. This thing is the default in the category. It's been going on for so long and doing so well because two things, Brooks has great relationships with specialty running stores, and they also deliver a product that is simple, it's low frills, and they don't mess anything up. We see a lot of brands coming out with new shoes, new tech. For example, take this Nova Blast, right? This is one of those more exciting daily trainers I've been talking about. And it's got a taller stack, 40 millimeters in the heel here. And it's a lot more modern take on the everyday running category. The Ghost is a lot simpler. And so most shoes on the market have moved towards eight to 10 millimeter drop. The Ghost and some of the other Brooks are still rocking the 12 millimeter drop with that lower forefoot because it gives a little bit more cushion in the heel for heel striking. And these are designed for beginner runners as an entry level product and also for walking. And so having a little bit more stack in the heel reflects that purpose. Now, this foam that we're seeing in the Brooks Ghost 16 is the DNA Loft v3 this is a super critical eva foam you can see it's nitrogen injected it also doesn't feel as firm to the touch as some of the other brooks foams it definitely feels a little bit softer than the dna flash which was in the hyperion max and maybe a touch firmer than the dna loft v2 which we see in the brooks ghost now 
I've used this Brooks Ghost over the past three to four months. I got it for Christmas and this has become my favorite walking and casual use shoe. This is one of the most comfortable shoes up there with the New Balance 1080 V13 that I've ever tried. However, for running, I prefer something either a little softer for my recovery runs or with a little more pep and snap for my daily miles. So I've used this mainly for errands, walking, and it is a very comfortable shoe. But this still has the DNA Loft V2 foam. This is the newest version of the DNA Loft foam, that super critical nitrogen injected. So I'm excited to see how these foams compare. Is this gonna be a little softer? Will it be a little bouncier? A little bit better for fast running? Now this is not a shoe designed for fast running. This is a daily trainer, an everyday running shoe. So it is designed for shorter runs. It's designed for errands. It's designed for groceries. This isn't gonna be designed for those two hour, two and a half hour, 20 to 20 two mile long runs you can do that but that's not what the spirit of this is all about this is designed to be a simple shoe short runs walking trips to disneyland and also durability so if we look at the bottom here you got a thick thick layer of rubber here this might be the thickest layer of rubber i've ever seen on a shoe i want to compare it here to the pegasus now the pegasus does have about or maybe a hundred miles on here plus some walking use and you can see even the ghost compared to the pegasus we got a much thicker layer of rubber on the ghost here nice layout though both of these shoes are designed for durability both have a good amount of rubber coverage because of that but the brooks is just an absolute tank and so lots of rubber in the forefoot and also lots in the back here for heel striking the highest wear area for a lot of us tends to be this outside back layer right here and you can see there is a good amount of coverage here now for the width we see a lot of brands flaring out the midsoles adding wider bases to give runners more stability even comparing to the ghost max here you can see the ghost max is maybe a touch wider so the ghost is wrapping the foam up a little bit going with that design trend again to give a little bit more stability in the neutral shoe but brooks does have a ton of other stability shoes in the lineup so this really is designed if you don't need a ton of extra support now heading up to the upper here we got a nice softer engineered mesh material it looks like there's a few layers here it is nice and soft to the touch we can do the scratch test here all right guys running shoe asmr scratch test you ready so nice soft material on the brooks ghost and for comparison i will scratch a scratchier upper here nike pegasus so you can hear the difference so Brooks Ghost is definitely going to be a little bit softer on foot. And we do get a decent degree of padding up here in the heel as well. Now compared to a shoe like the Puma Velocity Nitro 3, you can see these are pretty comparable. Similar amount of padding out in the back. And then we get these softer laces. That's nice here. Not all of these shoes have the softer laces. Even comparing to the Velocity Nitro 3 here, this guy has a bit of these firmer, harsher laces. So headline of the Ghost 16, before we pop it on the scale for a weigh-in test, new super critical foam, but that same approachable, versatile DNA designed for short runs, everyday use, and walking. All right, let's see where this comes in on the scale. All right, guys, so weighing the Brooks Goes Max here, and there are two reasons why I do this weight test. So right shoe is coming in at 287.5 grams. The first reason is to see how much the shoes weigh compared to others in the segment. And let me pop off this tag here. And the second reason is to do a QA check. And so we weigh the right shoe, and then we weigh the left shoe to see if they weigh the same. Now, New Balance and Asics have been the top brand so far for QA. So this is 287.5. Now I want to see how much the left shoe comes in at. 286. That is really good. So that's one and a half grams different. That is about a half percent off between these two. That's really good. The margin of error we look for is typically below two to three percent anything below two to three percent different is great we've had some brands like hoka where there's a 15 gram difference between the shoes and that's not great so 287 grams in the brooks ghost now a main competitor for the ghost would be the new balance 880 this guy is coming in at 269 grams and you're also getting a little bit more foam and protection in the 880 here at a lighter weight though i have to tell you guys i was not enjoying the 880 and i actually didn't get this up to 100 miles yet because sometimes when i'm not vibing with the shoe i'll save it because it might not be the right time in my training for it so 880 is on ice right now
And then comparing to another shoe, so Puma Velocity Nitro 3, this is going to give you more foam as well, coming in at about the same weight as the Ghost here. Also a super critical EVA foam on the top here, so this is nicer for faster running, but it is pretty firm. So we'll have to see how firm the Ghost is versus this, but I have to say it right now, Velocity Nitro 3 is pretty firm, and it's also not flexible. The Ghost here should be a little bit more flexible. You can see we can fold this thing in on itself. I'm sorry if you are offended by the bending of shoes. And then next up in the category, category here we have the nike pegasus this one is coming in at 286 grams so these guys are all pretty tight together and then last i did want to pop on the mach 6 and the rebel just so we can get a comparison between some of these lighter shoes so the new balance rebel v3 which is my favorite of these lighter weight everyday running shoes this is coming in at 224.5 and then the hoka mach 6 it's coming in at 236.5 grams. So 50 gram difference between these two. All right, guys, let's pop this thing on for a fit and feel test. All right, guys, about to lace up the Brooks Ghost 16. Now, as a kid growing up in Lowell, Massachusetts, rocking my Air Force Ones, I never thought this day would come. But here we have it, the things I do for you guys on this channel. So lacing up the Brooks Ghost 16, Let's see, true to size for sure out here in the front. And now this isn't designed to be the most comfortable shoe. It's designed to be just comfortable enough and not weird so that you can use it as a regular sneaker as well as a running shoe and there's no weirdness going on. And so Brooks in general fit a little bit on the narrower side. And this one isn't squeezing my foot too much, but definitely has a little bit of that classic Brooks narrowness. Now, one thing I'm noticing on this left toe box here is it is a little bit shallower than what I'm used to. And let me actually, I'm gonna go grab the Pegasus so we can do a little bit of comparison. All right guys, so let's compare to the Pegasus first. So with the Pegasus, I actually leave these shoes untied. I just slip them on and off. So Pegasus, I have a little bit looser tied here because I'm not gonna run in it, but these fit pretty similarly. I think I have a little bit more room up in the toe box, but are these in a, yeah, the Pegasus are actually in 11. So this is a half size bigger, but even with that, the material of the Pegasus is a little bit roomier all throughout the upper and the toe box, the volume of it, not necessarily the width because it is a half size bigger, but the volume of it is a little bit taller. Now standing on these, and of course the peg is broken in, but the foam of the Pegasus feels a little bit softer. The Brooks Ghost Foam feels very firm and structured underfoot. So I'm interested to see how it's gonna respond out there on the run. All right, next up, let's compare it to the Puma Velocity Nitro 3. Now the Velocity Nitro 3 is a little bit on the firmer end as well. This guy has a very, snug and narrow toe box and so what this guy is characterized by is this taper they have this european soccer boot kind of fit here so it comes to a point at the end the brooks ghost kind of comes to a point as well but the velocity nitro 3 from the top it almost looks triangular and these two feel really similar on foot in terms of the firmness of the foam both are super critical foams the brooks ghost is a super critical eva this velocity nitro 3 here i believe is a super critical tpee then it has a standard eva on the bottom you are getting a little bit more stack in the velocity nitro 3 but it doesn't feel like that much of a taller shoe now against the supernova rise which disrespectful on my part i did not even bring it out for that intro so i think the supernova rise is kind of a slept on shoe and with the launch of it adidas did not do the best job communicating exactly what it's for and where it's supposed to fit in the market so it competes with the brooks ghost in that it's an everyday running shoe but they want to with the supernova rise draw people away from the ghost into something that is super comfort oriented. So whereas the Brooks Ghost is a little bit of everything, it's not super heavy, it's not super padded, it's not super cushioned, it's just got a little bit of enough so that you can take it to the gym, you can walk around Disney World with it. With the Supernova Rise, they wanted to be as comfortable as possible, so they went with a little bit of a taller stack in the mid 30s here, and they're using a Piva foam. So both of these have more modern foams, they're not standard EVAs, but Supernova Rise definitely has more padding here. You're getting a much more padded tongue. You got a lot of padding right here in the back 
and the foam feels a little bit softer underfoot. Now I've gotten some really good miles in the Supernova Rise so far, and I've enjoyed how it's a little bit of a softer touch than some of these other training shoes at this $140 price point. This is probably the softest and also has a little bit of a pop and a bounce and a lot of nice stability from this standard EVA piece that we're getting on the bottom here. Adidas calls it the support rod. So this is a little bit more of a built up choice than the Brooks Ghost. We'll see how the Brooks Ghost runs, but I'm assuming that the Supernova Rise is going to be a little bit more cushioned than what we're getting out of the Ghost. And last year, comparing it to the 880, it's like they taught you back in the day. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So I'm just going to slip on the 880 here. So the upper of the 880 is actually pretty comfortable here. So it's nice and padded. And I'm joking about not saying anything nice at all. But what I didn't love about the 880 was the foam just felt firm, but not in a good way. Because a lot of the times when I'm getting a firmer foam, like what we get out of the Velocity Nitro 3 here, right? This is a lot firmer than what I typically run in and what a lot of runners run in, like the Speed 4, the Mach 6. But you are getting a nice pop. And when you run fast in it, you get some nice response out of it that makes it feel like you're getting your energy back. With the 880, I didn't exactly get that, and it felt like it was firm for no reason. It felt like they made this firm just because they didn't want to make it soft, but, but you weren't getting any benefit out of the firmness. So underfoot, these feel pretty similar. Honestly, if I didn't know I had two different shoes on, just in terms of the way these fit, I might not know that they were two different shoes. So both of these are probably two of the simplest shoes you could buy right now, and they feel like that. Uppers are... Nearly identical. 1080 might have a little bit more padding. Tongues are pretty similar. Again, the 880, or I said 1080 before, 880 might have a little bit more paddling. But overall, very similar. But we will have to see how the Ghost 16 runs because I was not impressed by the 880 so far. We'll see if the Ghost can do us any better. All right, guys, so lacing up both of these Peyton Manning 16s here. So the plan for the run today is to do our classic daily trainer first run test, which is eight miles with strides. Yesterday I did only one run, so 12 miles today. I'm only doing eight miles, no second run. And the way most runners are gonna use these Go 16s, they're not gonna be doing 20 mile double days in them. They're not most likely gonna be doing 20 mile long runs in them. These, the majority of people are gonna take them for a few mile jogs, hit the treadmill, hit the gym, walk the dog. And so my plan with them and with testing them in general is not to put a ton of mileage on them, but to see how they do for what most people are going to be using them for, which is short runs, some faster runs, and we will take them up to 10, 12 miles at some point. But today, eight miles in strides, we got a huge workout tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. But I'm excited to run in my first ghost. Let's get a little walk in these before we do that run. Now, I can see why people walk around Disney World with these because these are a very comfortable shoe. And just walking here, they're not, they're not necessarily bouncy, but I can feel the difference with that super critical EVA versus a standard EVA shoe. What, for example, walking around that New Balance 880, that it just felt like there was nothing. I was getting nothing from that foam. The foam in here feels... A little bit livelier even walking which is kind of a cool experience so i'm excited to see how these do running i don't i'm not thinking they're going to give us the bounciest experience but it'll be interesting to see how they do with some strides and pace pickup at the end so let's do it all right hold on guys quick drip check what do you think they do got the larry june orange so that is a positive by the way shout out to my homegirl jasmine g with a z for sending these through appreciate you I mean, for rocking these, a school pickup, not bad. Might have to throw on the tracksmith joggers with these, with the hobby jogger hat. That's gonna be a vibe. All right, guys, let's. I'm just, I'm just clowning around. Let's get into it. All right guys, eight miles with strides, coming in at exactly a 7.30 pace, right dead center in that aerobic range. 
one hour and 12 seconds. Pull up like I'm mellow on the Knicks, that crispy blue and orange. I know I'm making a lot of jokes about how these look, but he got the unreleased Brooks Ghost. I feel like I'm West Side Gun at Fashion Week. That unreleased swag. Fashion Week, me and Kim Jones. All right, guys, let's get this wrap up in. Brooks Ghost 16. You guys are gonna be surprised. All right, we got the shoe box again. And I think you guys are gonna be surprised at what we got in here today. All right guys, eight miles with strides in the unreleased Brooks Ghost 16. This guy is going to be dropping in April for $140. Now I'm sure not a lot of you had the Brooks Ghost 16 on your shopping list for 2024. If you watch this channel, I know we've been hyped up about shoes like the Hokamok 6, New Balance Travel V4, even Nike Pegasus 41, probably gonna get a little bit more pop than this guy here. However, I did have this on my shopping list for 2024. When I did that video at the top of the year, all the shoes I plan to buy and test and run in this year, Brooks Ghost 16 was on that list because I had never run in a Ghost and the Ghost is one of the most important nameplates franchises lines of running shoes out there it is the default when you go into a specialty shop you might walk out with the brooks ghost so because of that i wanted to get some miles in the shoe and let me tell you guys i am i don't know blown away i'm blown away i wasn't gonna say that i am shocked i'm surprised i'm blown away so over the past week i've gotten miles in the nova blast i've gotten miles in the mach 6 i've gotten miles in the rebel v4 i've run in a bunch of the plated shoes but thinking about this shoe and where it fits in now i like to approach this analysis from a few different angles right how does this fit in within the broader market? How does it fit in versus its competitive set? Then how does it fit in? How does it show up in a unique way that makes the shoe stand out? Now, within the broader market, we broke down, you got the unexciting everyday running shoes and you got the more exciting everyday running shoes. And so in the last generation of this, the Brooks Ghost 15, it went up against a shoe like the Nike Pegasus here, right? The standard, unexciting, a little bit, uninspiring shoes. Now with this guy, they've switched to the super critical EVA midsole, this DNA loft, where is it? Right there, you can see. DNA loft, nitrogen injected. And I've said this before, but super critical EVA might be my favorite training foam. And it's the same exact foam that's in the Hoka Mach 6. Now there's different polymers, probably different compounds, different materials blended within these two sets of foams. But the ride of this was surprisingly bouncy, surprisingly lively, and I had to feel myself holding back at certain points in that run. I told you I got a big workout tomorrow and I didn't wanna push it too much, but there were times where I was like, I can drop down to marathon pace. I could drop down to maybe even half marathon pace in this shoe comfortably and it has enough support, enough bounce, enough pop for that. So I was extremely surprised by that because a lot of these unexciting, uninspiring $140 daily trainers. They're not great for picking up the pace. They don't have the much bounce. They're more for walking. They have the support, but not the speed. And so thinking about other shoes in the category, the New Balance 880 V14, what was so disappointing about this shoe to me was that New Balance knows how to make a good foam. They have the fresh foam in the 1080 that's soft, it's supportive, it has impact absorption. This just felt a little bit flat and dull. And again, I'm gonna give it another chance later in the spring or summer. For right now, I put it on ice. I was not impressed. I came off of about 30 miles in the shoe feeling super disappointed. This is the complete opposite. This is my favorite of the Brooks foams I've tested. I've tested the Hyperion Max with the DNA Flash. I've tested the Brooks Ghost Max and that has the last version of this, the DNA Loft V2. This is the softest, it's the bounciest. It feels the most fun and this did feel like a fun shoe. So with this generation, it seems like they're sliding more to that Hoka Mach 6 Rebel V4 direction. And I know a lot of you guys out there, again, if you're watching this channel, you have your list of shoes you're interested in for 2024, you might not have this guy on your list. But for me, this is turning out to be a sleeper pick for a top daily trainer because it had everything that I look for in an everyday running shoe. And so if we take a look at the Mach 6 here, which is extremely white and blinding, again, similar super critical EVA foam. This is a little bit softer. You get more stack in the heel here, more stack in the forefoot and six millimeter drop, lower drop, and a bit more of a roll. But both of these guys had that bouncy feeling 
and what you're getting in the Brooks Ghost that you're not getting in the Hoka Mach 6 is a lot more rubber coverage. So take a look at the bottom of these two here. The Brooks is gonna be a lot more durable than the Mach 6. The Mach 6 is more gonna be for that speed and just at the back here, you can see we're already wearing a little bit into the Hoka Mach 6. Now, I am not saying that the Brooks Ghost is as fast as something like the Hoka Mach 6, as exciting, but it is but versus the other shoes that I know they're going against with this, like the 880, the Pegasus, the Velocity Nitro, it has a little bit more of that bounce and that pep that reminds me of what we get out of shoes like the Rebel and the Mach. Now to the 12 millimeter drop, because I know that's gonna be one of the drawbacks of the shoe for a lot of people. So this is my first time running in a 12 millimeter drop shoe, but shoes like the Pegasus here with the 10 millimeter drop don't bother me that much and this didn't feel that much different than a 10 millimeter drop shoe. I will say the biggest downside or drawback or potential downside or drawback for a lot of people is gonna be not the drop itself, but what that means for the four foot foam. Now I had some stack height numbers in the beginning of the video and those were reported by the brand. I'm gonna hold off on reporting the stack height numbers until Running Warehouse gives them because after running in the shoe, it does not match up to the numbers that I got. But what I will say is that the four foot does let through a little bit more ground feel than other shoes, other daily trainers, even compared to the 880, maybe similar to the Pegasus, but I know a lot of runners out there don't love the feeling of getting the ground in through the front of the platform and prefer to have a little bit more cushion. So the heel felt very cushioned. You get a nice smooth transition, but the forefoot here does have some ground feel, which I personally prefer. That's why I named the Rebel V3 my shoe of the year. That's why I love the Rebel V4. I like a little bit of a lower stack shoe when I'm running faster for my everyday miles. And this does have that, but it's a consideration and a concern for some of you who don't prefer that ground contact feeling. Now for the stability, I was impressed again at the stability. It is a little bit wider than a shoe like the Pegasus. You can see here, they have that bulb flare out. So nice support in the back here. Heel lockdown was great. Padding was great. Overall fit was super comfortable. A little bit on the narrower side. Again, that's the classic Brooks fit, but it will come in wide, so that's not a concern. Now the last drawback of the shoe that I did wanna highlight is the design. This is not the most fire looking shoe. I actually really liked the design of the Brooks Ghost Max, and it's not like they made it too modern, too crazy. It still looks clean and simple, but it's just a little bit more palatable for me wearing around town. I actually like how this looks around town. It's kind of like a modern New Balance 990. This on the other hand looks every bit of that dad shoe walking around Disneyland with a New York Mets cap on and not my swag, but I will do that. I'm gonna test it for walking. Design is the one drawback. Maybe they'll have some more muted colorways like that Brooks Ghost Max, but not my favorite. So for the run, I did those eight miles, turned out to be about an hour, right? And most people who buy this shoe are probably gonna take it to 30 minutes, an hour max. A lot of people are gonna use it for walking. This is gonna be a very comfortable shoe for that. Shaping up to be super versatile. I am really impressed. I'm gonna definitely get this up to 100 miles within the next few weeks because I think this might be a sleeper pick for a top daily trainer of 2024. And a lot of you guys aren't gonna consider this because of the design, because of the nameplate, because of the brand. But if this were coming from New Balance, if this were coming from Hoka, if this were coming from Nike, I think a lot of folks would be singing the praises here because it has everything that I look for in a daily trainer. It's got a nice bouncy foam. It's not too firm. It's got good stability. It's gonna have that classic Brooks durability. And overall, it's a fun and versatile package. So I vote with my miles and we're gonna have to get some more miles out of this thing. So stay tuned, but I'm highly surprised, highly impressed. Good job, Brooks. I cannot wait to get this to 100 to see how it holds up and to see if what I'm getting out of this foam, that nice soft bounce, really can compete with those heavy hitters from Hoka and New Balance. So my plan with the shoe, and next week might be a down week with the mileage because I have that big workout tomorrow and I wanna let my body recover. I think we're actually about to hit 10 straight 100 mile weeks, but my plan with the shoe is likely gonna be get some more miles in it next week, maybe take it up to 16 miles, two hour effort, test it on a long run, and I also wanna get some top end speed. Today we did do some of those strides at a sub five minute pace and it performed really well. So I wanna do maybe some faster mile repeats, some threshold work in it and see how this performs because I know a lot of people who buy this shoe are gonna have one shoe and use it for everything. So stay tuned for more. I can't wait to run in this thing again. I will see you tomorrow for another video.